Him in my soul. Hallelujah, Father. Oh, gracious Father. Oh, loving and kind God. We're humbled to be in your presence. You've summoned us to be here. Thank you for allowing us to hear the heavenly call and to respond by showing up. You didn't have to wake us up this morning, but I'm glad you did. I owe it to you to praise you. I owe it to you to say thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. I owe it to you, Lord, to not be ashamed to praise your holy name. What more can I do, Father? Help me, help me, help me to give all I have to magnify in your name. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continuously be in my mouth. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Have thine own way this morning. Let thy word, Lord, soak, penetrate, infiltrate into our souls and our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated. Glory to God. It's a good day to give God thanks. For well, the Lord is good. <laughs> uh, we, we have a bad, bad devil, but we have a good, good God. Hallelujah. And he's good all the time. And all the time, he is good. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Glory to God. Woke up this morning with my mind on Jesus. It was a hallelujah there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Slept all night long. Death was going to and fro, up and down. But God stayed him from coming to my house. Just want to thank you. Just want to thank you. Glory to God. Well, the Lord is good. I like what uh, Elder Moore said earlier. He said, uh, we serve a great God, a great God. I like what Sister uh, McIntyre always said, ain't nobody like it. Glory to God. Nobody can't be compared to any because there is no comparable one in all the earth. He is the Lord God Almighty. And besides him, there is no other. It's so glad to, it's so good. And I'm glad to see all of you on this morning. Thank you for uh, giving time to come and be with us to hear the word of the Lord. I pray I'll say something this morning that, by the voice of God, that will encourage you even the more. Last week, we talked about unshakable faith. Unshakable faith. You can't just throw it off, throw it in file number 13 in the trash can and walk away from it. And I want to just hold on to that a little bit more on this morning as we talk about faith. You say, well, Pastor, you've been teaching on faith all the time. You just, well, the, the, without faith, it's impossible to please God. The psalm the older folk was saying <clears throat> some years ago, so many falling by the wayside. Lord, help me to what? Stand. To stay. And we can see that the time we're living in, the pandemic in particular, that have even ushered in another aspect of the times. Uh, it's a part that God hid from us for a long time, and I believe he did that to secure us to make sure that we're rooted and grounded because he knew the time will come that our faith would be tried. There in the book of James is where we're going to go on this morning <clears throat> as we speak of the time that we're living in and what is necessary for us to 
endure or to hold out. Now, we, we, we're blessed, my understanding. There's over 200 some thousand people that have died from the pandemic here in America. There's over a million that have been infected. But 200 and some thousand have died. And so you can imagine it in the atmosphere of the death angel. A lot have died that didn't have uh, the coronavirus. But a lot got infected or was attacked by the enemy and was unable to overcome. It took them. But the very fact, and, and, and the devil's aim is to wipe us all out. Anyone that believes that Jesus is Lord, he comes to wipe you out. He, want, he only wants those that have allegiance to him. Loyal to him. Now some will say well, that God is a dictator. No, 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 no. God is not a dictator because God is the only one that gives you a choice. A dictator don't give you a choice. Either you do what I say or you go. gone. Let the highway be your guide to wherever you're going. But God uh, knows the strategy of the devil and uh, he's already outwitted him. He says in his word, many are the afflictions, the troubles, the trials, the tribulation, the persecutions of the righteous. But I love that word, but. But God, not can he do it, he will deliver us out of it all. It is anything you want to call it. If it's a pain in your neck, he will deliver you out of it. Isn't it amazing that cancer is in this earth and yet a person who dies with cancer doesn't take the cancer with him or her. He delivered out of cancer. Cancer still is here. <laughs> and so God said he will deliver them out of it all. We're going to a place that cancer and headaches, migraines, whatever it may be, and tumors, it, it, it can't exist. It can't even evolve, can't even come up. The old song would say, going where the wicked shall cease from troubling. Sickness and disease won't be able to get in. They may not, but you can't come in. It'll be as it were with the days of Noah after building the ark. God has preserved or built a sanctuary. That sickness and disease can't make entrance. As it were, with the ark, it was built. Uh, Noah and his family was in there. And all the animals that God had uh, preserved to be in the future was already in that ark. Except for those that was in the water, he preserved them in the water. But then when the doors were closed, now watch this, Noah and his son didn't close the door. God closed the door. Matter of fact, it was the wisdom of God that built the ark. God is building the church. And the Bible declares the church as being a mystery. We don't know how you did it, God. How you took us, wretched as we were, and you saved us. It's just like you're taking a brown cow eating green grass, giving up white milk. How you do that, God? How you do that? The church is a mystery. When we look and see, we can look at each other where we were because the Bible said we were born in sin. Sin is ugly. And yet out of that ugly, out of the ashes of it, 
God is brought forth praise and glory by the same one that was in sin. He's beautified the meek. <laughs> That's how he's put favor. Somebody say favor. favor. On those that call on his name. And so we are at a place, even in this pandemic, that there's a portion of us is going to bring about the realization of what we said we believed and what we said we accept. Uh, the, the, the trials that we are going through, they are very, very uh, uh, tremendous. Glory to God. We don't know sometimes uh, what is going to happen, but uh, God has already fixed it. He's got something on the inside of us uh, that just don't give up. Let's, let's look here in the book of James. And uh, chapter number one, if we would. Glory to God. This machine sometimes don't do right, do it. Technology, give it to me on the screen if you would. James chapter number one. Many of the afflictions of technology. But the Lord will deliver me through it all. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Uh, James chapter number one. And these words. James, a servant of God. And of the Lord Jesus Christ. To, let, let me get my Bible here in front of me. I'm far-fetched here. Glory to God. Tell somebody tell God, thank you. For, for sight beyond sight. All right. Here we are. God is good. Are you sure about that? Somebody give him a praise for right now, God. All right. All right. God bless you. All right. Here it is. James, a servant of God. Now, what is he? He is a servant. He's a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers' temptations, knowing this. That the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work. That ye may be perfect and entire or complete. Wanting nothing. If any man like wisdom, let him ask of God. That giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is dangerous. <laughs> Glory to God. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted but the rich in that he is made low because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. Look there at verse number two and three. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Knowing this. Did you hear that? You're not going to go in it blindly. It's that knowing this. See, faith is knowing before you know it. 
Lord, I don't know that. Oh, yeah, you do. By the Holy Spirit, knowing this, and you've got to put this in your mind, living godly isn't easy. Living godly is not easy, but it's worth the living. Glory to God. Now, you think living a sinful life is, is easy? It ain't that easy. It's not that easy to lie, especially when you're in the presence of the word of God. But it is comfortable to lie because you're born in sin and the substance of your life is that of a sinful way. So it is the norm for, you don't have to teach a child how to lie. Matter of fact, you don't have to teach a child how to steal. You don't have to teach a child how to be sneaky. Glory to God. Just let them live. And you can ask them, oh, what you doing, nothing? Why you got your hand behind your back? I just got my hand behind my back. Got a cookie in it that they just stole. You don't have to teach them how to lie. It's the norm of a sinner. So when sinners sin, don't. It's normal. You mad because they sin. Why are you mad at a sinner sinning? That's just like you being angry with the water being wet. Why would you be angry with water being wet? You expect for water to be wet, but you're angry because it's wet. Oh, sure. I don't come out in this rain and don't got soaking wet. What did you expect? It's raining. And so it's normal for a sinner to sin. But that's not God's perfect will for them. His perfect will, they come to the knowledge of their wrongdoing and accept him as a righteous guide into eternal life because you cannot get into heaven with sin. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace, the favor, the mercies of God may stay with us and keep us in spite of how we act? No, no, no. God forbid that kind of behavior. We're not coming here to slip and to slide. In school, the first couple of hours or so of the morning, we were down to earth in doing our homework and passing in assignments, you know, checking in the roll call and the Pledge of Allegiance. And back in our day, we would even have a prayer. We would have to learn certain scriptures. We had to learn Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 13. We had to learn uh, 23rd Psalms. We had to learn 100th Psalms. You know, at various things we had to learn. And then we quoted those things. And we had prayer. Bow your head, close your eye, prayer. It ain't like these people today. They say, let us pray, and they're looking around. When you call for prayer, there, there ought to be something automatically on the inside of you to bow your head. And only come before the throne of grace. So we did all of that, and then we got down to some subject, whether it was English or math or spelling tests or whatever we had. And we did that for a couple of hours. And then there came a period of time called rest. But they call it recess. We went to lunch, and we had recess. We went out there, and we played whatever ran and for a half hour and came back in the classroom. And then we had the remainder of the day down to it getting ready or dealing with the other subjects that we hadn't covered. And I think some of us are still at recess. Look to somebody and say, recess is over. We got to come back to the classroom. There are some things that we've got to deal with on the latter end of the day. And that's where we are right now, at the latter end of the day. And I'm looking at the saints of God. This pandemic has caused some things to unearth. Did you hear what I said? I said, unearth means to uncover itself. It was there all the time. You're just looking for the opportunity to just be me. 
Oh, all them restrictions and you can't do this. And, and so the pandemic kept us out of church. And so where well, the church kept you monitored and kept you sanctified. Now I don't come to church so ain't nobody around because Nobody visiting nobody, so no nobody know what I'm doing. Let me pull my bottle out. Because I'm depressed. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me pull my cigarette out. Because I'm depressed. And so there's been an unearthing. There's some things you just suppressed, but Paul said you got to kill it. <laughs> You didn't kill it. You thought, you acted, you portrayed, you mimic the fact around other people that this thing is dead. But give me a silent moment all to myself. When there's nobody laying hands on me. Give me a silent moment of time to myself. Well, there's nobody can see me and call me. I wonder what I would wear if I didn't come to church on a constant basis. What would I put on? I, I, since I hadn't seen the sinks since um, March, I, I wonder what would be coming out my mouth when I get angry with my wife. Or my husband. What kind of language will come out of me? Did I kill that bad word from the past? Or will that bad word come up when I, I got to hang around her 24-7? Or she's got to hang around me 24-7. And we get on each other's almost last nerve. I ain't going to get my last nerve. I got to keep part of something. <laughs> Just how would I respond? What, what would my, my emotions and my motions be? Where, where would I speak from concerning her? And what would she think of me when I become moody without a cause? See, I become angry without a cause. The only cause I see is, what you doing here? What you coming here for? Why are you talking to me like that? We are not the only people that live in this house. Why don't you get up sometime and sweep the floor? That's your job. Wait a minute now. Why am I the only one that cooking? Why am I the only one washing dishes? Why am I the only one making up the bed? You sleep in it too. Why am I the only one that cleaning out the bathtub? You washing it too. I reckon you watched since March. <laughs> See, when you, you, you put in a corner, what is it about you that can prevail against the condition? I'll tell you what, the corner will show just who you really are. When your back is pressed against the wall, your reaction going to tell me who lived in you all the time. Because you really don't know. You, you think because you got the Holy Ghost and the saints are around you and hands are laid on you and all is poured on you that everything is all right. But there comes a time when the anointing has to prove itself. When there's nobody around, are you still greased down when you haven't been anointed since March? Are you still covered since the last time you've been in prayer with the saints? We don't forsake the, the, the gathering of ourselves on the job site. But when it comes to church, we forsake the gathering of one another. Your strength don't come from a paycheck. Your strength comes from the law. Yeah. 
And so we, 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 we're torn back and forth. But James said, when looking at the situation, he humbled himself and said, you know what? I'm a servant. That's all I am. Now, if he said, come, I come. If he said, go, I go. If he said, sit, I sit. If he said, you don't eat today, I can't go in the corner and have an attitude. I got to trust my master. And then it says that uh, he's a servant of the Lord, of God, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's, he's writing now the same message, the same thought, the, the same revelation to the 12 tribes that are scattered. Otherwise, Paul said, what I say to one, I say to all. And some folk will become very sensitive and, and very personable uh, when they come to church and the word of God is being preached. Say, he talking about me? Yeah. <laughs> you one of those scattered abroad. saying what I say to one, I say to all. And guess what, y'all? Right now, in the Holy Ghost, I ain't scared. <laughs> I ain't scared. Glory to God. And so, now, he said, greetings. He said, my brethren, my sisters and my brothers, I'm coming to you in behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am not the message, I'm the messenger. I, 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 I come to emanate, I, 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 I come to, to share with you the brightness of his glory. I'm just a little light coming from the big light. I'm just the, the mailman. I'm bringing you a letter from the Lord, a message from the Lord. I'm a courier. I'm just one that carries whatever you give me. It ain't my business. I just bring it and give it to you. Whatever part you need, whether it be the part of hope, the part of, of, of victory, whether, whether you need a part uh, called peace, whether you need patience, I'm just bringing it to you. Whatever you have need of the Lord has come to deliver to you what you have need. You're weak, he's bringing you strength. If you're lonely, he's bringing you comfort. I'm just coming to represent him in any facet where there's a need. He said, count it. Count your blessings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can't count your blessings. You can tally up to a certain number, but God is far beyond whatever number you come up with. Did you, while you was counting, did you tell God, thank you for being able to count? Did you tell him that, Lord, I thank you that I, I, I can recognize the number one, the number two. See, so, so whatever we try to give God, God is beyond that. So he said, count it all joy. Take time and tally to the best of your ability what God has done for you. If, you, if, if, if you're concerned about pleasing him, then, then mark it down. The time that you thought you pleased him and the times you knew you didn't please him. And see which tally is out the most. Because God said by way of Isaiah, my thoughts are not your thoughts. So whereas you thought you was pleasing God, God said, oh, you wicked one. You're so selfish. You're so into yourself. You want to be lifted up and glorified. Whatever you do, you want everybody to know, I did it. Whatever you give. I, I, I'm, I'm the first one that gave $100 that day. Whenever you give folk things on the outside. You know, I, I, help, I help a lot of people. And it, it, it's not about you helping the people. Amen. But, the, oh, yeah, I help the Swinney family. When you name me, now you. When you name your name, I help the Brown family. I help the White family. I, I help this one. I help the, the Gideon family. I, when you say, I, you took glory from God. And it should never be I. And the, but the Lord has blessed me to give. Don't worry about who you gave it to. Just give. Give and live. Live to give. Some, some folk are living, but they ain't whether to 
to give. It's all about, I'm, oh, I put these, I, child come to my house and see the flower arrangement I just put in my living room, my, my foyer, and, you know. Come, come and see what I did to my walls. Come, come and see. And then you come to the house of God, in some cases, and you see and you hear, you see the door not painted, and you see the hinge almost broken on the door of entrance. You use the bathroom and hit the latch, and you got to take the top off, the flush to come out. That's, that's, that's in God's house. But your house is immaculate. Glory to God. Man, you got some fine clothing. You, you, you brag at the fact that your purse costs $400. You brag at the fact that you've got uh, 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 python leather shoes on. Python skin shoes, whatever it is. <laughs> and, 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 and got the fangs of the python at the tip of your shoe. You brag at, man, these shoes cost me $2,000. But when you come to the house of God, the, there's a stench in the house. And the, the, the carpet is dirty. And you said, I come to praise him. <laughs> I'll leave that alone. Let me go somewhere else. Go to God. So as, as James is talking here, he said, Count it joy when you fall into divers' temptations. Maybe you haven't had a knock here recently. The devil hadn't bothered you recently. Let me tell you why. Because he already has you. If you're not tempted, and the temptation is to lure you away from where you are. It's to take you from your place of stability. Why be tempted if everything isn't all right? You're tempted because the devil knows you got something that'll keep you holding on. Now, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, at the latter end, he says, faith, hope, and charity. Faith. No, they start out faith, hope, and charity. But the greatest of these is charity, love. Now, but Paul goes on in Galatians and tells us, Faith worketh by love. Your faith is not, no good at all. I got faith. I got faith. I, but, 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 but where is your love? When there is a need, are you the first to run to the need? I was looking at an article pertaining to some of the billionaires in America. Billionaires. I didn't know there were so many of them. Billionaires in America. And uh, they were talking about how much money they gave, listen to this, to the presidential campaign, whether it was Biden or whether it was Trump. And uh, they, they were saying that uh, the previous year they gave so much money but now, this year, they gave double that. And the little bit of money, the money that they gave the previous year was like $100,000. In one case, two brothers, both of them billionaires, each one of them gave $720,000, each one. So they gave one point me one point five million dollars to a campaign. 
the church got a campaign going on, Lord. I'm calling on these billionaires because your word said the wicked have stored up for the righteous. But see, they went on to say they oftentimes played games or they played golf and some other things, went to basketball games and etc. with these contenders. So they became friends. And they gave this huge amount of money in this one location for the campaign just to make either one of them president. Well, God, I come to tell you, I'm running for my life. And I've got a few others behind me, and I want to lead them properly. But in this day and time, Lord, and you know, it takes money. You, if you wear out your shoes, whether it be stretchers or whether it be Air Jordan, you're going to need another pair. <laughs> Glory to God. I, Lord, I, I need some new shoes on my feet so I can keep trucking down the way. And not only for myself, but I need everybody to follow me, Lord. I need them to have some new sneakers on. Because we can't be running this race in our fancy python shoes. <laughs> Glory to God. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me get to a point here. Uh, there are some things about faith that only works when you work the word. Faith is involved from the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I came across that scripture one day and, and the Lord spoke to me quite strongly and said, now, if hearing come by the word, have you heard? <laughs> have you heard what you said you was hearing? Because heard is the past tense of what you said you was hearing. Now, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And faith that has no works behind it is dead. If you hear, you will activate. If you've heard, it should be activated. There ought to be some results in your saying, I'm hearing the word of God. My life ought not be as bleak. It may be somewhat uh, uh, temperous, or should I say, uh, it should be uh, persecuted, and trials on every hand. But it, it should not be to the point I lose grip of hope. I'm going through this, but my hope is built on nothing less. I've gotten to the place that when nothing else matters, I've got to believe God. I don't care what I'm going through. I don't care how I've been attacked. My result of success and victory, I've got to believe God. God, if you don't change anything about my situation, I'm still going to believe you. It is then this faith that's been tried by many of the patriarchs of old that has proved itself over and over again. The 10th chapter of Hebrews gives us a list of all those that have dealt with faith from various angles. All of us are not going to go through the same thing. But all of us must have the same thing in order to endure. We've got to have the God kind of faith. It, uh, got to have the faith uh, like that of Esther. That I'm going, if I perish, I'm going to perish. But ultimately, I'm going to give out all I got. I refuse to let any of me be left behind. Everything I've got, I'm going to press toward the mark. Because that's where my final destination is, is to be in the presence of God and hear him say, well done. We've got to have the kind of faith of that of the three Hebrew boys. Say, so now I'm in this fire and so far I'm not burned up. Uh, whatever they've done to me, it have not uh, relinquished my confidence in him. And they said, now, if he don't deliver me, look right here, they're in it, they're in it, they're in it. They're in it. Don't, don't you be weary in well-doing. I don't care what you're going through. 
Don't give up to it. Remember, it could be anything that the devil designed to hold you in bondage with. But don't you give in to it. Uh, was that Houdini? The man that could do all, you, know, you put him in shackles, put him up on the water, and he come out of it. He didn't give in to being locked up on the water. In his mind, he figured, I'm going to get out of this. And that's what you've got to say, I'm going to get out of this. Whatever this is, I'm going to get out of it. It shall not hold me down. Three Hebrew boys said, if he don't deliver. You mean I got to live this way the rest of my life if he don't deliver? You mean I'm going to be knocked down and walked over and talked about? I'm not going to be promoted on the job. I'm going to be in this position the rest of my life. If he don't deliver, I know he's able. I know he's able. I will not give up on your God. I know you're able. That's the reason you got me down here. That's the reason you got me into this. That you may be glorified. If you don't deliver me, if you don't deliver me, I've made up my mind to be content. Content in the fact, but the God I serve, he's able. Now, I'm not content being locked up and locked, knocked down, but I'm, I'm, I'm content in knowing he hadn't left me. Lo, he's with me always, even until the end of the age. And so you've got to have the faith and the confidence of Jacob. Don't look like I'm cursed on every side. Every nickel and dime is going this way. I, I'm, I'm going to classes, uh, trying to manage my money, but it seems like something always come up and take my money. But I keep coming to church. And I keep getting wild. I keep getting loose. But the Sam, I keep re re remembering and rejoicing that I'm free. There is a, if I'm not free out there, there's a place God has preserved for me. I can come and I can feel free. Glory to God. I'm not inhibited in here. You can't make me sit down in here. I'm like shouting John in here. If you hold my hand down, my feet will go up. Hold my feet down, my hands will go up. And if you don't want me to pray to me here, God has given me a piece of land, I'll go out there and shout. If I'm in an apartment, I'll go to my own apartment and shout. You can't stop me from praising him. Glory to God. So, the... Jacob said, when he grabbed hold to, to that theophany, uh, to God, the representative of God, he said, now, he said, but I got to go. The sun is coming up. He said, I got to go. The sun is coming up. I got to go. The sun is coming up. And he held fast. The Bible said he wrestled with him all night long. Couldn't get the better grip. Every time he gripped, the angel would flip it. And then when the angel would flip it, somehow he got favor. He flipped the angel. We're in a flipping time here. But it came time. He said, "Now normally every three minutes we go to our corner and rest, but we've been wrestling all night long." And the only way I'm going to let you go, he said, I got to go. I got to go. He said, okay, you can go if you bless me. He said, no, I got to go. He said, you want to go? Yeah, I got to go. I got to go. You can't hold me longer. No longer. I got to go. He said, if you want to go, bless me. He said, because I'm not going to let you go until, until, until. In all of our lives, there is an until. Until. I 
I'm not going to let you go until somebody said until I'm going to hold on you got something that belongs to me you got something God sent through you for me hey if you want me to leave you alone bless me give me what you got for me I will not let go. And so, uh, be seated, please. So then he says, James says, James said, knowing, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh, 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 worketh. Lord, when are you going to deliver me? It worketh. The trial is there to work you. Glory to God. The trial is there to keep you mindful that there's something greater on the other end of this trial. You're not going through this just to go through it. God has a reward at the end. The man that's out there running, he's not just running just to run. Glory to God. There's a prize at the end. So you've got to be persistent, consistent, and resilient. <laughs> you can't give up. Be consistent. Keep doing the same thing you've been doing. If you've been waiting on God, wait on him in a praise. I know you can and I know you will. Lord, when will you deliver me? I hear him say, occupy, tell him, come. what occupy? Just keep doing what you've been doing. Keep working the word. Keep trusting me. Keep believing in me. Because I will come through. I will deliver you. I promise you that. I'm not a man that I should lie. I will bring you out. So you got to become consistent. Persistent. And resilient. Be steadfast. Resilient. I don't care what comes my way. I still believe you, God. I've often said, I coined a little phrase myself. said, Lord... Whatever I'm going through, there's a reason for it. There's got to, and all I put it in, there's got to be something good going to come out of this. Glory to God. I just don't look at the situation. I said, there's got to be something good. All good and perfect gifts come from above. There's got to be something good that's going to come out of this. I don't know what it is, but I'm, going, I'm not going to let you go until... You release it to me. Yeah. I believe this is a year of release. Yeah. Peter and the boys told all night long. Glory to God, you got to have the faith of Peter. Told all night long. Throwing, casting the net. Pulling that heavy thing in. Time after time. Nothing in it. Pulling it in. Pulling it in. Casting it out. All night long. They talk with those nets. Only to pull in nothing. Weeping may endure for a night. But in the morning. They saw Jesus on the shoreline. And when they saw Jesus, he began to talk to them and began to question their success. We've told out all night long and we've caught nothing. Jesus said, let's try one more time. But normally the fish bites at night, Lord. Normally they gather together in their school. Did you hear that? In their school all night long. They're being taught how to evade the net. <laughs> Glory to God. They're taught all night long. He said, but cast your net on the right side. Because you've been casting it on 
the wrong side. Otherwise, it didn't matter what side of the ship per se, but the fact they didn't believe they were going to catch anything from the first pool. The first pool said, there's nothing out here tonight. The second pool said, there's nothing out here tonight. And so when the morning came, he said, well, we might as well go on in. If at first you don't succeed, cast your net again. It doesn't matter how many times you fail. The only thing going to count is the time you cast it out in faith and get a draw. How many times did Babe Ruth stand at the bat? And those guys threw that ball. Of course, they, today they're monitoring it that some of these guys are casting the ball a hundred and some miles an hour. No telling how fast they were throwing them back then. Because they were nothing but country boys back then. Them boys could throw a ball. Them boys threw that ball. And Babe Ruth, as powerful and influential as he was, he said, he thought the ball was going, it was in the catch his hand. How many times did he fail? But every time there was a game, he got right back up again <laughs> and knocked over 700 home runs. Glory to God. Don't you give up? No matter how long it takes you, if at first you don't succeed. Well, I, I came to the altar and I, I wanted them to give me prayer or to pray for me and nothing happened. But the old folk used to sing a song. Don't stop praying. The Lord is not. Don't stop praying. He'll hear your cry. And he told Daniel, I heard you the first time. And I'm come down to deliver you. He told him, I, I'm not going to send Michael and, and, and Gabriel and some of the others out there. He said, I myself will come down and deliver you. So don't you stop. You failed that test. Oh, but I don't fail it 15 times. Don't worry about it. Is that what you want? Is, is, is that your desire? Is that going to help your future? Yeah, but it's costing me. Keep working, get the money, go try again. But that, that's a waste of my time. No, it's not a waste of your time if that's what, what you want. Don't you stop. I laid, hands been laid on me. I don't know how many times. But how about this time? He touched the man. How do you see? I see men as trees. The Bible said, <laughs> come here again. And Jesus touched his eyes again and said, now, now, now. How do you see? I see men as men. Because your vision is blurred doesn't mean they can't get cleared up. It may be delayed. Keep on coming and getting the strength. Come get in confidence. Come get encouragement. Come and join yourself to partnership. Because if I don't believe you can be healed, my touching you, you won't be healed. It takes two making one. I got to believe God can heal you. And you got to believe that through me or by God directly, and he will do it either way, through the man or the woman or directly himself, he will heal you. Oh, I'm going through something financial and I just can't seem to get things together in my head. Don't you worry about it. Cast your cares upon him. Your faith said, I believe God can. I believe God will. So have confidence in Peter cast his net on the right side and he couldn't pull it up. He couldn't pull it up. He had to call on the other ships. See, whenever, whenever God blesses you, it's not about just you only. 
but it's about those that hang around you, hang out with you. God has guaranteed you whoever's around you will get blessed too. Glory to God. Faith. Faith. Don't you give up. Don't you give in. Don't you give way. You got to tell yourself, I'm not going to let your word leave me until it blesses me. I'm going to grab hold to your word. You pro- God, you promise. Now help me to get in the highway of doing, being obedient. Because God promised don't mean you're going to get it. You got to be obedient. Yes, yes, yes. Obedience allow the word of God to saturate you. Obedience will allow the word of God to manifest itself before you and others. If you go into your secret closet and pray, nothing going to happen in the closet that other men can see, but something happens in the closet. You get the reassurance. That when you come out, you come out with a smile and say, everything going to be all right. Yeah. And you don't have to do anything but live holy. And when you live holy, God said in his word, if you walk up right before me, there is no good thing will I withhold from you. You'll find out that people start giving you. you say, what would you give me this for? Well, the Lord just led me to give it to you. Well, you walk in the grocery store, you at the cashier. Uh, a counter, you check it out, and, and a sister, a brother will come in and tap you and say, can I speak to you a minute? And say, oh, well, yeah, because you're a little hesitant. People you know, you don't know them, and a little hesitant. And say, uh, I know you don't know me, but the Lord told me to speak this to you and to give this to you. In the grocery store by a stranger giving me $100? See? You're not talking about a God that doesn't know what to do, when to do, and how to do it. He does things in ways you would never even think it could be done. But because it was done, you say, I know that was God. I know that was God. What they spoke to me, I know. God, I didn't tell anybody. I was just uh, meditating on it. I know that was you that opened that thing up. Here you don't have a dime in your pocket. Someone walks up and give you $200, $500 and put it in your hands. You almost took your last breath. You know you ain't but one, one breath away from death. You almost took your last breath. Exhale. Because God did something for you in the moment of time that was most needed. Faith work by love. And if you loved, if you love God, if you love God, there ain't no telling what's going to happen to you today. Today. Your faith is working for you right now. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now faith. We sing the song, and in my conclusion, it don't take a whole lot. Just use the little you got. Faith, faith, faith. Just a, a little more faith. And how do you get a little more faith? Get in the word. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word. The more word you have, the more faith you have. Shall we all stay?